Have you ever wondered what a data tech carries around in their tool bag? My name is Michael and I own Field Tech Academy and I've been in the IT data field tech industry for 25 years. This is the main tool bag that I carry with me into almost every site. What I carry in this tool bag, I have found, are the main things that I need 90% of the time. I hate going into a site and going back and forth to the van to get more and more things. So this allows me to get into a site and get the job done 90% of the time. Let's get into it. This video isn't sponsored by anyone. These are my honest opinions based on the experiences that I've had personally. I'm not super brand specific. I am just trying to find the highest quality, most practical tool for the job. Now this isn't some unboxing video. You'll notice that all of these tools are well used. So this is the real deal. These are things that I actually use day in and day out out in the field. So let's start with the tool bag. This is the 16 inch DeWalt tool bag. I also carry an 18 inch, which is a little bit larger and accommodates my skill saw and my oscillating tool, my hammer drill, drill bits, things like that. They're both made the same way. You'll see that inside they have internal pockets, which is amazing. That way everything doesn't just get dumped down into the center and you have to dig through it every single time. It also has good external pockets with different levels. And you've got a Velcro pouch in the front to store things. And you even have a zipper pouch up here at the top, which is very well hidden. It also has a shoulder strap, so you can carry it that way. Or you can, of course, carry it with the hand straps. So that is the tool bag. Now let's talk about what I carry in the tool bag. Now I've drilled down even further. I'm a little OCD, but again, it's about being efficient in the field and trying to carry everything with me that I can. I'll set my tool bag down and then I'll pull out my hip pouch. And in this, is the majority of the tools that I use in most cases, or at least when I'm running cable or running around, I can put this on my hip and I've got very critical things that I need all the time. Now in the description of this video, I will include a link to this tool bag and everything in it that you can get on Amazon. This particular hip pouch is made by Husky. I don't buy these anymore because I found that the Velcro on the back quickly gets dirty and just doesn't adhere over time. So the pouch in the Amazon description is a different brand that I found that works a little bit better long term, but I still have it. I'm still going to use it until it just absolutely doesn't work. In my hip pouch, I carry certain key things. I carry my work pro electrical scissors or snips, however you want to call them. These have great large handles for big hands, it has stripping points and a crimping point. It also has this cutout in this part of the blade to allow you to cut larger cables as well as cutting thinner things here at the tips. It's important to have a good flashlight. And so this is a flashlight that I've proven out in the field. You know, there's tons of cheap flashlights that you see at checkout registers, things like that. But this is a Coast HX5, durable. I've dropped it a million times. It only takes one AA battery, it has a belt clip or a hat clip where you can clip it to a ball cap. It also has a beam focusing feature that will focus in and out. Now, I know a lot of you old school guys still strip cable with scissors, but some of the newer guys, you want to understand that a lot of times when you try to strip cable with scissors, you're going to overcut and you're going to cut the internal pairs. So having a good stripper is very important. This is a Klein branded one. It has the circular feature where you can just run your finger around, strip the cable, pull it apart, and you've got your bare conductors. You always want to have some kind of knife. You're going to be opening boxes a lot, having to cut different kinds of things. This particular one takes a razor blade, so it's replaceable. I can keep it sharp as I need to. Has a nice clip, so it'll clip inside my pouch. Another thing that I think is really important to have is a telescoping magnet. So many times you're going to drop something or need to get at something, so having a telescoping magnet will bail you out. When you're making marks on things that may not be permanent, you want to use a carpenter's pencil, so I always carry one of these so I can mark in a way that can be erased and is not permanent. When you are making marks where you don't have to worry about erasing it, you don't want to use just a regular Sharpie from an office supply store. Those tips go bad very quickly. This Milwaukee Sharpie is made for dusty, dirty work environments. Having a great precision screwdriver is important. And for me, the storage of the tips is important. You can buy them and they have like 20 tips and all that, but you've got to carry them and store them somewhere. Honestly, with a precision, I just need a Phillips and a flathead, maybe a little bit larger and a little bit smaller. So this allows you to have your larger and your smaller flippable tips so you can go from Phillips to flathead on the large and the small side, easily flipping it around. I have a nicer cable tester, but it's always nice to be able to have one right in your hip pouch that is small and compact 
to do basic cable testing so you at least know is the cable good or is the cable bad. This is their Land Scout Junior. This is an older model. I don't think they make it anymore, but in the Amazon list that's in the description, I'll put the current model that you want to look at. Of course, you always want to carry electrical tape, so I keep that tucked down in there. And then I've got my Klein 27-in-1 security tip screwdriver. Again, there's a million different types of multi-tip screwdrivers. This one has security tips, which is important in this field because a lot of the screws that you're going to run into are going to have those pins in it where you're going to have to have tips that have holes in the middle. Tip storage is a big deal to me. I want to have everything right here with it. I don't like to have them separate because again, they're going to get scattered and lost. So this allows you to carry all of your tips right here in the handle. The one downside to this is it doesn't include a Phillips and a flathead. So you have to buy those separately. I buy a PH1 and a PH2. So I have the larger and the smaller sizes. And these will also be included in the Amazon shipping list so you know exactly which ones to buy that match this screwdriver. I carry a lot of different types of pliers in different tool bags, but for my hip pouch, I found that just having a regular old pair of needle nose covers me for most events. I can cut if I need to, I can use them as pliers if I need to, and of course I got the needle nose feature. The other thing I like to keep on hand at all times is a punch down tool. So I have one that does 66 and 110. Typically I have the 110 punch down here, and in the handle of this one it has the 66 blade. Again, I'm not brand specific on these, so the one that's in the Amazon list might not match this exactly. Another thing that I try to carry is a little roll of Velcro. Mine's getting depleted, I need to you know restock it, but you always want to have some Velcro to do cable management. And then of course you want to carry some zip ties on hand. So that's really the bread and butter of my hip pouch. Now let's talk about some of the other things that I carry around in the larger tool bag. Are you struggling to make enough money as a field tech on platforms like Field Nation and Work Market? Are you tired of service calls being offered at $25 an hour? The Direct Client Package has over 40 different national companies that offer subcontract IT service calls all across the United States. I have technicians who have bought the Direct Client Package and have recouped their investment within weeks. In addition to the names, you're going to receive onboarding contacts and information so you know how to join the client's network. You're going to get a client introduction letter. You're also going to get some exclusive video content that's not available to anyone else. If you are an experienced technician and you have a full tool loadout and you've got access to all the supplies you need to do service calls, then you should seriously consider the direct client package. I've included a link in the description of this video that will take you right to the direct client package, or you can go to our website at fieldtechacademy.com. Obviously, you know, there's a big old spool of Velcro. And of course I restock my hip pouch with a smaller roll of it. I just peel this off and just roll it up into a smaller piece. And buying it in bulk like this saves you a lot of money. Even though I carry around the 27 and one screwdriver, it's still very important to have a couple of other different types of screwdrivers. You'll see that the shaft on these regular screwdrivers is smaller and there's some environments you're gonna get into where this simply won't fit into the crevice that you need to get to to access a screw. And then there's other times to where you really don't have a lot of clearance to be able to get a full size screwdriver into that space. So I always carry my little short stubby screwdrivers for Phillips and Flathead as well. And last on the screwdriver side is a driver. It doesn't really matter what brand you like, but I would recommend that you buy everything in the same brand. That way you only need two batteries in most cases and you can interchange them between your driver, your hammer drill, your oscillating tool. All of those things operate on the same battery system. Other than that, I would say that you want to have a good two inch tip. You want a Phillips and a flathead. You also want to have a really good magnetic receiver. This particular one is DeWalt. I'm sure other brands do this, but you want to make sure you don't buy like a cheap low end one. You want one with a strong magnet because you don't want these tips coming out. And the strong magnet also helps you to get screws to sit on the end of this without falling off as easily. In my regular tool bag, I carry a pair of pliers and a pair of side cutters. In my larger tool bag, I carry some additional larger items, but that's what I keep in my main tool bag. Even though my work pro scissors will strip cable, there's only three gauges it will do. I would also recommend getting yourself a multi-gauge cable stripper. And again, I'm not really tied to this particular model or brand. Even though I don't do electrical, there's certain times I still want to know if a circuit is live, if I'm around it. So having a little cable tester is really important to protect yourself. I've never had reliable success with the cheap off-the-shelf electronic stud finders. Maybe the higher end ones do better, but I don't want to spend $100, $150 on a stud finder when it's just going to get thrown in a tool bag and dropped and broken. This little stud finder is less than 20 bucks, has strong magnets on the back. You'll run this across the wall and it will either find metal studs or it will find metal screws 
into wood studs, and that'll let you know where your studs are. When it comes to crimping and terminating your cables and your keystones, there are tools for every brand of keystones out there that will crimp all eight conductors at the same time. I typically use the Dynacom Quick Jacks. Leviton makes their own tool. Almost every brand out there has this tool. I know that Dynacom will give it to you for free if you buy, I think, $100 worth of keystones, which isn't hard to do in today's world. The other brands are probably going to have to pay for it, and they're probably in the $100 range. But it is so nice when you're doing a large cabling job to be able to just strip the eight conductors, put them on the keystone, slide it in, and crimp it all at once instead of having to use the punch down tool to do them one at a time. And then, of course, you've got a crimper to crimp the ends on cables. I like the combo ones that will do RJ45 and RJ11. This also has a stripping feature. This is made by Klein. I'm trying to be efficient in the field. So these little fishing tackle boxes are really awesome. And I like these because they have really good clips on the doors. Some of the other brands have like these little flip down doors that just break too easily. So these by Plano, I really like. And I'll put these in the Amazon list. That way you can find this exact model. You know, and the things I keep in here are like my fish sticks accessories because I mean, Again, you've got all these little things, and if you throw them in tool bags, you're never going to find them. So this has got my fish sticks chain, my fish sticks bullnose, magnet, and some of them even have a light that attached to your fish sticks. So I keep all those little pieces in here. Then I keep my nut drivers in here. Now, most nut driver sets only have five sizes, and they're all standard sizes, SAE. I also carry around driver adapters so that I can grab my regular socket set and use any size socket in my driver. Then of course I do carry around a spare magnetic holder for my hammer drill as well as my two inch flat. So I keep that and a spare PH2 Phillips in case this gets lost or broken. I don't have to go find one on the job site. If you're like me, you go out on your jobs and you may have larger organizers where you carry your bulk RJ45 connectors, RJ11 connectors, screws and bolts and drywall anchors and all that kind of stuff. You may run out to your van and grab a handful of these items and then go in and do the job and have a few left over. Those are the kinds of things that always get thrown down in the bottom of a bag and until you clean your bag out or that time when you need that one thing, you're digging through to the bottom of the bag to find a screw or a drywall anchor or an RJ45 connector. But I also don't want to carry these big guys in to every single job. So this is kind of my catch-all and I've put certain things in here that I found that I go out to the van for a lot. So I've got drywall anchors. I've got wall plate screws of different lengths. They're a little bit longer because you may run into situations to where you've got a wall that has double drywall or your wall plate bracket is recessed too far for the standard wall plate screws to fit. I also carry my RJ45 connectors, my Cat6, Cat5. because That's something that you constantly need to re-terminate. Um, I carry around some drywall screws and some self-tappers here, and then I keep this section for actual computer screws in case I need to pull a hard drive or pull the side of a case and screws get lost or they're missing when I get there. And then of course you always need extra zip ties. So there's a certain amount that I carry in my hip pouch, but that's a small quantity. So I always try to carry a bag of zip ties in my main tool bag. And then I've also got longer zip ties and bigger bulk bags in some of my storage tubs. In the data field, we always need to tone and trace cables, so I keep a tone and trace set on me. As you can see, this one is well loved. I'm not super brand specific, but I've really enjoyed these Fluke models. They've actually got a little bit of a higher end model that filters out noise better. And so I'm just waiting for this to wear out and break so I can buy that. But this one's a little more affordable and works really well for the field. One other little side thing that I carry is an RJ45 coupler. I run into situations where you may have a cable that's terminated and there's not actually a jack to plug into. So you can't plug a cable into a cable. So I use the RJ45 coupler to plug that into a cable and still be able to tone and trace it without having to cut the end of it off. Next, we have an LED headlamp. There's a million brands and there's a million types of these on Amazon and Timu and all these websites. The reason I like this one is because it has the good wide beams on it and the top and the bottom ones are actually pointed up and down a little bit so you get a wider range of view for your light. It also has a spotlight if you need that and the battery lasts a really good long time. This headband is nice and wide so it's very comfortable. And of course, you always wanna carry around a pair of protective glasses and I like to keep them in some sort of case because otherwise they just get thrown in the bag and they get all scratched up and torn up. I like to carry this little one foot level in my main tool bag. I obviously do have a three foot level as well which gives you more accuracy but if you just need a quick basic level check, this is awesome and it has magnets on it so you can stick it on anything that is magnetic. Then you always need some sort of label maker. Most clients in this field don't like handwritten labels. Anything works if you like it. 
but the reason I use this Dymo 280 is because it has a rechargeable battery. And that is so nice because you're not burning through batteries after batteries after batteries. You just charge it up and it runs for quite a while. The only thing I wish it had was like a USB-C or something like that. You have to have the actual Dymo charger to charge it. And if you lose it, mm, that's kind of fun. Next thing I carry around in my main tool bag is a butt set. This is a fluke one. It's been my personal favorite. I like the way it's shaped so that I can just hold it on my head and my shoulder. It comes with alligator clips just like any butt set would, but I also have wrapped into my cable a standard RJ11 phone plug. That way I can just plug in a cable to a jack and I don't have to use the alligator clips when I've got a terminated jack. This one will do tone and pulse and it also has a last number redial button on it and doesn't require a battery for that feature. And then of course you need a tape measure. Even though we're data techs, there's a lot of measurements that you have to do. And you don't have to spend a ton on a tape measure, but I would get one that shows the extra line measurements and I would get one that is stronger that can go out at a further distance before it bends over and collapses. So that's all the things I carry in my main tool bag. I have a playlist above where I go into other tool setups that you can watch to get more ideas of things that I do, including how I make my fish sticks tube. And if you got value today, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Just want to get you out there making money in the field. I'll see you in the next video.